All right, everyone. Thank you for joining me today, Monday, for this 10-minute burst of innovation. I'm really hoping that you see this one as a shift in thinking, a shift in how you see or are able to find the innovation and the opportunities out there. I can't believe it's another Monday um, through all this. This is absolutely incredible. And it's so wonderful to see so many of you on, the, on here. Just more and more keep joining us. Before I dig in, I just want to remind you that Friday, May 1st, is the Global Book Release Party. Woo woo! And you know what that means. That means I want to see you all of all of you on there. We're going to share nuggets of wisdom around innovation to get through uncertain and uncharted times. There's celebrity pop-ins, business leaders who have incredible wisdom to share that I've invited to join and have graciously accepted, and interviews with everyday innovators, people like you and me who are out there making an impact so that we can do more of that too. We can learn from them. So it's three different times that I have during the day, but please, please, please come join me. Just go to my website, go to launchtree.com, and that's where you can grab your seat. Okay, let's dig into today's burst of innovation, which is all about forgetting that horrible phrase outside the box and thinking of a new way to find innovation, a new way to inspire yourself and the team around you. So here's the thing with outside the box. And I guess this is a little bit of a question for you as well. What do you think when you hear that? Do you think, oh yeah, that's great, no problem. Or do you think, oh my gosh, where am I supposed to go? What blue skies? Wait a minute, I've got this reality behind me that I need to deal with. What am I supposed to do when I come back from this outside the box? This is the experience that I see time and time again when leaders give the mandate to their teams to think outside the box. What actually happens is that people shut down. And frankly, for good reason. They shut down because they realize, oh my gosh, I've got this box that I have to deal with. What am I supposed to do when I come back? Wait a minute, you said outside the box, but where? Where outside the box? Where am I supposed to go? The phrase is tired and dated, in my opinion, and it actually sabotages your innovation efforts. And if you're out there, don't get me wrong, and you have said it, don't get me wrong, it happens, we've all said it, I've said it. Um, it's a very easy phrase to use when you're trying to get people to push and to stretch. But it's been my experience that that, that backfires when you talk about outside the box, blue skies, whatever it is, now, not if you're one of these innovation teams that's supposed to be working you know, in the labs quietly doing stuff you've never seen before, that's different. But that's not most of us, is it? That's not me, that's for sure, right? I need to innovate with the realities that I have. So I want you to think about, instead of saying outside the box, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about how do I rearrange the box that I have? Here's what we've discovered in the workshops that we've done with clients around um, solving a challenge or unearthing an opportunity. When, so actually, let me give you a story around this um, and I'll keep it general not to share confidential information on my client, but I had a client call me and they said, Tamara, I've got a challenge. Um, you know, we've got this decline in our marketplace. We're struggling. We've got some competition coming in. He said, I, I had a facilitator come in. I hosted a brainstorm and, um, you know, we were all supposed to think blue skies outside the box. And what we got out of that brainstorm was more incremental than any, any brainstorm should have given us. Um, and I'm not sure what to do here. So I said to him, you know, let's try another one, but let's do it a little bit differently. Instead of thinking outside the box, box let's give your team some exercises and a mind sh mindset shift to rearrange the box they have. So we got together, we did this brainstorm, and sure enough, in rearranging the box, the team came up with breakthrough outcomes. There is so much innovation right in front of us in the work that we have, in the box that we have. As Bijal put in the show notes, sometimes a bit of structure is helpful. Absolutely. In fact, structure can actually foster innovation. We often think of those things as mutually exclusive, but they're absolutely not. Structure is actually very important for innovation. And frankly, all of us are dealing with the realities that we're in front. So, so when you say to your team, hey, rearrange the box that you have, they're like, oh, I can do that. I've got, I've got this workload. I've got these resources. I've got these opportunities. I, I've got these things happening. How do I think differently about them? As many of you know, and it's in the book, my book, Innovation is so funny with the screen. Um, innovation is everybody's business. All right, we talk about the definition of innovation being thinking differently about what's right in front of you to create a competitive advantage. 
When you think about that, how empowering is that? How easy it is to innovate when you're just rearranging the box you have. So I wanna share a quick story with you to kind of close this out that I think really highlights that. It's actually a personal one from my childhood that was actually a, the first example of rearranging the box that you have and how powerful it is. And I share it on page, oh, I think it's page 49 of my book. And I wanna just give you the high level of it. So here's what happens, right? I'm 14, it's the 80s and I love fashion. Now, obviously it's not good fashion. It's like peg pants and shoulder pads because I'm a product of the 80s. But whatever money I made from working, I spent on clothing. So of course, right, I had a closet full of clothing. So like lots of 14 year old girls do, my girlfriends would often come over and rummage through my closet to borrow stuff, right? Very natural behavior and it would happen over and over again. And one Sunday afternoon, I was sitting there as my friend Jill is rummaging through my closet and like putting stuff over her arm to take with her. And I turned to her and I said, that'll be $5, please. And she's paused for a moment. And I looked at her and she looked at me. And then she gave me $5. And I realized instead of borrowing clothes out, I could rent them out to my friends. Now keep in mind, this was before the internet, before renting was like all the rage like it is now. I had this closet full of clothing and suddenly I realized, hey, if I just rearrange what's right in front of me, I can actually turn this into an opportunity, into a business. So I created a rate card and it was like a dollar for um, shoulder pads, sweaters, a dollar for pants, two dollars for those super cool jelly shoes do you all remember those i had them in all the different colors those were the best sellers out there or renters out there but do you know where i made most of my money it wasn't actually on the renting it was on the late fees because <laughs> when you're 14 you can't drive yourself back but i share that story because in one moment i just looked differently at the resources that were right in front of me i just said how do i rearrange the pieces right here. And that's how I grew a business. That's how I made so much money that summer. My parents could not understand how I always had money for Slurpees at 7-Eleven and new clothes. And I mean, they just couldn't believe it, right? Rearrange the pieces in front of you. So when our time is up in a couple minutes and you're kind of getting back to work, I want you to think about how do I rearrange the box that I have? How do I take that structure that I'm in and think a little bit differently about it? How do I put the pieces together in a new way that leads to new ideas and new opportunity? If you're leading a team, here's the thing I want you to think about. When you tell your team to rearrange the box, you are giving them permission. You are putting them at ease. So instead of saying outside the box where you're shutting down innovation and the primal brain takes over and now I'm like, I don't know what to do. And there's a little voice in the back of my head saying, no, that's not possible because I've got this reality over here. So those ideas never go anywhere. I want you to know that your team is now going, oh, I have permission to deal with what's right in front of me. And as I said in the beginning, the best innovation is right in front of you. And just because you're rearranging the box, doesn't mean you're being incremental. It doesn't mean you're being small in your thinking. What I've discovered is that permission and that freedom actually makes you even more open and more breakthrough with your thinking. I was on a LinkedIn Live interview the other day with um, Maureen Berkner Boyd, who runs Moxie Exchange, it's a diversity inclusion, and we were a company, and we were talking about. Um, this company that was creating face masks, but what the part they, they figured out the mask, but the part they couldn't figure out was the sling, the ears, right? To how to keep it on. And one of the researchers was looking at the doors and looking at the sealant on the doors. And that led her to realize, hey, we can actually use that for the masks. And that led them to their breakthrough thinking. Rearranging what was right in front of them. Wasn't going out and finding something different. It wasn't blue sky. It was right in front of them. So take a second and think about, how do I rearrange the pieces? If you're leading a team, how can you say to them, hey, let's rearrange what's going on in front of us. I have this great exercise that I love to do with teams. In fact, we've done it virtually as well, and it really works. We have them write all the different pieces of their reality on different sticky notes. And then we kind of put them together in new and different ways. We talk about them in new and different ways. 
it's, it's like taking a puzzle that's already put together and then breaking it apart and then putting it together in a new way. It is incredibly powerful. And time and time again, people will say, oh my gosh, Tamara, I didn't, I never thought about this consumer need in this way. But now that I put it with this thing, I see it differently. Or I've never looked at the inventory in our warehouse in this way, but now that I see it connected to this thing, I see it differently. All right. I can't believe it as usual. Our time is up so fast. Thank you for joining me. Let me know the value you got in this in the chat bar. It's always good to see. And I hope to see you all at the Ruckus book launch party on May 1st. Like I said, there's a lot of content and a lot of great knowledge and wisdom and people that are going to be joining us to make this an awesome experience for you because I want you to have what you need to thrive. So yeah, it's about the book, but more actually it's about innovation and about you. So, and the only other thing I just want you to know for those of you still on um, is that um, we promise to do these three days a week until May 1st, which means we're coming up on that. So the question I have for you guys is, um, should I keep doing them? Do you want me to keep doing them? How many days a week? So I'm going to get some market research and some feedback from you all. So um, Cheryl, you're welcome. Thank you, Connie. You're welcome as well. Um, thank you, Cheryl. I look forward to having you on the book launch. So I'm glad you're joining. Paul, thank you. I'm glad that was insightful for you. Um, yes, Connie, I will try to keep going. Uh, we'll have to have to figure out how many days a week I can actually fit in as we're getting busier and busier. But I really want to keep doing this because I love the connection. I love the value it provides you. And if you tell me it gives you what you need, then I'm all in because you're the ones that matter. So, all right, we are, oh, Tom, thank you. Keep going. Okay, good. All right. See you all at the book launch. This is me giving you my mom look. Can you see it? Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. All right. I will see you all very soon.